props must be paid, of course, to one of the stalwarts of film noir, Richard Conti. Now, he may not have been in the upper echelon of actors like Bogart, Mitchum, Robert Ryan, but he certainly left a legacy in noir, whether playing solid citizens in films such as Thieves Highway and The Sleeping City, or charismatic crooks in movies like Cry of the City and The Big Combo. Frankly, his role in The Blue Gardenia is pretty routine stuff, leaving him upstaged throughout by his photographer sidekick, Al, played by the redoubtable Richard Erdman. How you doing? You can read all about it in the Chronicle. Erdman basically made a career out of playing second bananas who steal the show out from under the star. Now, our viewer question this week comes from C.J. Shank. I'm going to assume this is a real name, although I don't know if it's a man or a woman. So, the Shank wants to know if the song Blue Gardenia was written for the movie or if it was used because Nat King Cole had already made the song popular and the film was tailored around it. Well, Mr. or Ms. Shank, since 1953, when Nat Cole introduced Blue Gardenia, the song doesn't have the in its title, it's become a staple in the repertoire of many jazz vocalists, especially women. Dinah Washington, Helen Merrill, Etta James, and Laura Ellis are only a few of the singers who've covered this tune, which was written by Bob Russell and Lester Lee. And yes, they created it specifically for this film, with the great Nelson Riddle providing the arrangement, as he did for many of Nat King Cole's biggest hits. Gardenia Now I'm alone with you It's interesting to note, however, that although Vera Caspary's original story was called The Gardenia, the name of the nightclub in her story was simply The Gold Room. It had no flowery name or South Seas theme. Clearly, the studio's strategy was to play to the 50s trend in tiki culture and to snag Nat King Cole, a jazz pianist who'd soared to the top of the charts, singing the huge hits Mona Lisa, Too Young, and Unforgettable. Now, this certainly wasn't the first time he'd appeared in a movie, but I do believe it's the first time he introduced a new song in a film. Cole was typically cast in movies, obviously, as a nightclub crooner, but in 1957, writer-director Samuel Fuller gave him his best acting role as a mercenary soldier in Southeast Asia. China Gate, for which Cole, of course, sang the theme song, was not only the first American film to depict the war in Vietnam, it gave America's most popular black entertainer his first chance to portray a complex, fully developed black man on screen. Samuel Fuller was always ahead of his time. Well, that'll do it for this week's excursion through Noir Alley. If you want to join the conversation or ask a question, use hashtag Noir Alley to share your thoughts with us and other film noir fans on Twitter. And of course, I'll be back here next week when I'll present another Fritz Lang film, one that almost everyone agrees is his American masterpiece. Until then, steer clear of those Polynesian pearl divers.